Hello, my name is Graylin Trammell, and I am here with you today to talk about division using an area model. The problem that we're going to work with today um, is going to be 252 divided by 12 is going to give you, obviously, an unknown at this time. Now, with this problem in mind, the first thing that we need to consider, or the first thing that we should do, especially with students, is to complete a ratio table. If the ratio table is done vertically or horizontally, it doesn't matter, but what is important is that students can utilize the information in the ratio table to help them then solve for this division problem. When I'm filling out my ratio table, I need to ensure a couple things. I always start with one. I like to add two to my ratio table next because I can easily figure out two from the one. And then usually I go straight to 10. Anytime I'm doing a ratio table, I like to have one, two, 10, and then five. And then we have conversations about if we need to add anything extra. So one times 12 is 12, two times 12 is 24, 10 times 12 is 120. And I'm gonna make my screen, I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit more so I can have some more space to write here. And then I can figure out five times 12 from looking at the 10 because five is half of 10, so I'd take half of 120 and I have 60. Now, I would ask students, can I add 20? Should I add 20? And hopefully they would say, yes, you can add 20 because you can use what you know about two times 12 to figure out 20 times 12, which would be 240. Would I want to add 100? And you would hope they say no, because 100 would be way too big, as would 50. So I'm going to stick with the numbers here and utilize that in order to um, work through solving this problem with a ratio table. My first step is going to be I'm going to identify my dimensions on this side. I know that I have one dimension is known, which is my 12, and here's 12 represented. And the other dimension is what we're trying to find and we are going to utilize what we know from our ratio table to help us solve that. So I'm gonna go ahead and label my 12 here. And we need to find the 252 somewhere in order to determine what's our unknown dimension. So what might we order? I say order, but you might say, what might you choose to use from the ratio table? Your first choice may be 20, which would be awesome because that's going to get us really close to 252. So if I outline my 20, and here's my dimension of 20, right here, it's 10 and 10. Here's 20. I can go ahead and close it in. And my area now is 240. Now, there's workspace down here, and if you don't have workspace, on the page that you're working on. Maybe you can just use a piece of scratch paper. But I know that the starting area that I had was 252. I have figured out 240 of the 252 so far. And so the question remains, well, how much area is left? And once I do the subtraction, I'm left with 12, which makes this problem fairly easy because I can just add one more dimension, which would be my 12. And now this together, so here's my one, so I have 20 plus one, gives me a dimension, or excuse me, an area of 12. And so my answer to 252 divided by 12 is 21. Let's try one more problem. How about 336 divided by 14? So I'm gonna clear my space. And I have 336 divided by 14 is going to give my unknown. And just like earlier, I want to start with my ratio table. And I always start with 1. I have 1 and 14. I go to 2 next. I have 2 and 28. And go to 10, which is 140. From 10, I can get my 5 because I can figure out half of 140, which is 70. And then the question is, should I add 20? Sure I can, which is 280. 
Should I add 100? No, it would be too much. Should I add 50? Might still be too much. So let's utilize what we have and let's go ahead and highlight or outline our known dimension. So that's 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So we know one dimension already. We want to find this unknown side length. So what might I utilize from my ratio table to start with? Probably 20 again. It just so happened to work out that way. So here's my 20. Here's 10 and 10, which gives me 20. I'll go ahead and close it in. And I know that now this area is 280. But I'm not done because I need an area of 336. So I have 336. I figured out already 280. So now I need to know, well, what's left? So I'm going to do the subtraction. And that's going to give me, here's my 13, 56. I have 56 left to um, shade in, essentially, in order to make up my whole area of 336. 56 is not on my ratio table, but I can start making some combinations. I could combine 2 and 1, which would give me 3, and then I can add 28 and 14, which is going to give me 32, or excuse me, 42. So now, maybe I'll do a side length of 3. and. I need to now figure out, well, what's left? So here's my 42. And I can go down here and I can keep working. And I know I still need 14 more, which works out perfect because I can just add one more. And now, I have my unknown dimension, which is 20 plus 3 plus 1. So my answer is 24. And this is how I would use an area model in order to solve a division equation.